Hi, my name is Robert S. Murphy, and I'm a doctoral student at the University of Nottingham studying psycholinguistics. Now, I'm going to perform to you today um, a Pecha Kucha session on creating champion students with neuro-based pedagogy. Now, let me remind you what a Pecha Kucha session is. It's an automated 20-slide uh, presentation. Okay, I only get to speak for 20 seconds per slide, and the slides succeed automatically. Okay, so I have less than seven minutes altogether with you. Um, I'm not going to be editing all this, so the pressure is on. <laughs> okay, it's it's a live recording. Now I'm going to have fun doing this, and I hope you have fun too. All right, now let's begin. All right, so our brains are not computers. But think about it, every day we get bombarded with all these metaphors that tell us that our brains are computer-like. But the reality is we don't have random access memory in our brains. In fact, it works very differently from that. Our memories are not hardwired. Unfortunately, though, because we have all these metaphors, teachers and students alike and parents end up expecting our students and our children to be able to answer to test questions as if we had random access memory. That's a major disservice. See, we don't store the details. A computer, like use Photoshop, you can blow up a picture and count the pixels here. Our brains do not work that way at all. We do not store these tiny details. We have to re-piece and put together and do a lot of guesswork with the information that's in front of us. So basically we have this, we have just memory. This is what our memory looks like. So look at this picture. Ah, you can look at the bottom and you think, oh yeah, maybe that's ground, and then maybe there are trees above that, and maybe there's a light sky above. How did you do that? Well, you have fragments in your brain that you use to put together these ideas, and it's guesswork. This is how the brain works. Now, emotions, surprisingly, fuel learning. What do I mean by that? Well, it's Darwinian logic. This monkey sees something, it gets shocked because maybe something is dangerous. It will learn from that experience or it will die off. So, we as creatures have become emotional because we are the ones that survive these dangerous experiences. And if you have an experience such as uh, somebody keeps taking food from you, you're either going to die off or you're going to learn how to protect yourself with new skills or make new technology. Okay. And this is why, Darwinian logically speaking, we are such emotional creatures, and this is how we learn. We learn through emotional experiences. Now, a little brain example here. We have the amygdala in the brain, which is basically like an alarm for us. When the alarm goes off and something dangerous happens, our muscles get bigger, we get ready to fight, or we get ready to run away. If that happens too often, uh, we have problems like PTSD, highly traumatic contexts uh, occur in the body. But it's not all bad stuff. We also really uh, enjoy talking about the things we like, like food. Think about all those television programs and magazines we have out there. And look at this this guy over here on the, on the right. He really is enjoying this apple. He'll probably remember that experience. Okay? So positive things really stick in the brain as well. Now, it sounds like such a simple concept, concept but see, re we remember what we love and what we hate. It's almost a, a non-issue. But it is because we forget to include this in the classroom. We have to latch on to the concept. In classrooms and learning context, we have to bring in what we love and hate to the table. Okay? Now see, what do I mean by that? But see, think about all those boring details and all those boring textbooks and all those boring classrooms that you had. Do you remember sixth grade, this book here, page 72, all these boring diagrams? No! You probably don't even remember having that book. Okay? But we still teach like this all over the world. We have to remember boring things don't stick. Now, does repetition work then? You read something on the board a hundred times. Will you learn something from it? Well, yes and no. If your body has an aha moment, okay, if there's some kind of emotional response to it, then yes, learning can happen. Otherwise, it's mostly a waste of time. So, what I mean to say is, we need to have these learning processes, scaffolding, that connect to emotion. There has to be a learning process connecting to emotion. It's quite simple. Okay? 
we have to remember to do this every time we're teaching something. Now, what else is necessary? Well, we have to pique curiosity by giving solvable mysteries. This is a key word, solvable mysteries. Remember that. Solvable mysteries bring aha moments to the students, and that push, pushes their learning forward. Okay? It pushes their learning forward. Solvable mysteries. So, emotions, process building, and these aha moments. Okay? Emotions, process building, and aha moments. These three things help build and sustain neural networks in the brain. This is what learning is all about. Emotions, process building, and aha moments. All right. What else is essential? Sleep. Sleep deprivation is the worst thing for our brains. Well, one of the worst things for our brains, okay? And learning. We need anywhere from 7 to 10 hours of sleep every night, students and adults, all of us, okay? Now, why is that? Well, when we're awake, there's this uh, place in the brain called the hippocampus, which is basically our brain's librarian. It takes in information like a nice librarian, okay? It remembers where information came from. When we sleep, what it does is it turns those old networks on again, those lingering networks on. It fortifies them by using them more and more, okay? And that is what keeps those so-called memories alive in our brain. So, how do we keep students motivated? By choice. Give them choices in the classroom. Let them analyze the situation. Even if there's only one plausible choice to make, still give them these choices. It really raises motivation, and it works. Okay? Give students choices along the way. Also, empowerment. Let your students teach each other. Let them assess each other. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Let them have this feeling of empowerment from a very young age and let them carry it through the rest of their lives. This keeps learning motivated, motivational for them. So, emotions, a learning process, that connects to those emotions, give them solvable mysteries. Make sure they have enough sleep so the hippocampus works for them at night. Give them choices in the classrooms for their learning. And empowerment. Let them teach each other. Let them assess each other. And that's how you create champion students in the classroom. Whew! Thank you very much. And that is my Pecha Kucha. How to create champion students based on neuroscience. Okay, now this presentation was brought to you by Fab3. Uh, we're going to have a Neuro EFL conference uh, July 14th to July 16th, 2012 at the University of Kitakyushu. Uh, I will be presenting there and I will also be emceeing. And uh, I'm going to be talking about a lot of these concepts and a lot more actually. Okay, now for further information, please visit us at Fab slash EFL.com. Okay? We have these uh, brain conferences annually. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them for you. Thank you very much and hope to see you at one of our conferences.